Hey, Truth Loaders. I am Michael Stevens from the YouTube channel Vsauce. What was your background prior to uh, being a kick-ass mall Hello and welcome to Feedback Mondays, whatever you'd like to call it. It's a new style of show. We thought we'd give the show a bit of a shake up. We're still going to read out some of the best comments. We're still going to talk about stories that interested us, but we're going to speak about stories that we saw over the weekend that we all thought in one way or another was pretty good. So everyone's here. Hi. All right. Including Grace. Yes. <laughs> Who tweets, Facebooks, and is pretty much the voice of Truth Loader until now. Here's the face. <laughs> So um, everyone's got a story that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. that we saw that isn't necessarily video. We normally focus on videos, but citizen journalism is a broad topic, and there's sometimes video is not the only way to tell a story. So, yeah. Now this is the this the story I spotted this week, or in fact this morning, to be honest, was the story of Revive and Restore this comp this organisation who are working with TED, and they want to de-extinct some animals. So I saw the headline and th saw people talking about it. It kind of inspired a lot of people to ask the question, what the hell is this all about? Ultimately, this organization is looking for like some criteria on how and why you would de-extinct de an animal. And it's really simple. Is it practical? Is it desirable? And is it rewildable? So has it got somewhere this thing could live? And an interesting thing I spotted, someone asked them, like, why? Why are you even bothering to do this? And they said, for the same reasons we protect endangered species, to preserve biodiversity and genetic diversity, to undo, that hum Sorry, to undo harm that humans have caused in the past and to restore diminished ecosystems, and to advance the science of preventing extinctions. So, yeah, all pretty interesting, until you see the animals that they're planning on bringing back. And this is the first one, a saber-toothed cat. Which That's terrifying. It is. I don't know my life. <laughs> I'm not sure how practical a saber toothed cat is. I don't know. It'd be good as a household pet. Or it is or is it desirable? I it would be pretty cool. Yeah, it would having be having good. a I, think so. I mean really? Really? <laughs> Look at it. Look at its skeleton, it's amazing. There you go. So they're planning that this is this is a legitimate animal that they could and would like to bring back. Uh, and one of the criteria is it practical? Have they got all of the DNA to be able to make it happen? And they have to make the DNA go into an embryo and be born out of another cat with big teeth. And Very there's weird. definitely nothing that could go wrong with bringing a saber toothed cat back to life. <laughs> nothing. And this is another one. The woolly mammoth. You know. I'd like that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of cuddly. They're cute. But they are. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were cut on the front of it. Yeah. <laughs> another one. A mastodon, which is the first time I'd even heard yeah. of this animal. It's I'm basically an elephant. Not to be confused with the progressive metal band of the same name. <laughs> <laughs> but my favourite one, this picture is amazing. There is an animal, or there was an animal, called a moa. It lived in New Zealand. It is 12 feet tall. It weighed 250 kilograms. And it just it didn't have any wings and just kind of wandered around. And obviously, it got hunted to death. Bring that back, I say. You're probably not going to know this, but is it related to a cassowary or, a, uh, or an emu? I have no <laughs> ostrich. idea, but if anyone knows, let us know in the comment and we'll, uh, so everybody can know if it is related. Now, the, the, the discussion around this was kind of interesting. People were saying what animals they'd like to bring back. One guy on Reddit suggested bringing back a uh, megalodon, which is the top shark you can see here. To put the scale of this incredible creature into perspective, the green one is a great white shark, probably the most terrifying animal ever. The grey one is, is a megalodon. It's not, hang on, it's not the most terrifying animal ever. No way. Ever. Well, You're including Tyrannosaurus Rex in that. Yeah, That's but, definitely scarier. Yeah, but I have. Velociraptors. I can, yeah, but I'm on land, you see. I can run. Scary. Just, you know. I think we can say that the Megalodon surely was the scariest animal ever. It was 20 metres long, it ate whales. <laughs> so, yeah, that does sound pretty scary. Bear that in mind. Yeah, I know you have that. So why not the Megalodon from Yes, Yes, of course, on Reddit, 189 points, to which someone replied, because should we really bring back a predator that ate whales into a time period where whales are endangered? It doesn't sound like a good reason to bring them no. back to me. But hey, if whales went extinct, we could just <laughs> bring back the whales. The Megalodon, but they'd have nothing to eat. Yeah. yeah. So I thought it was a really cool story. If you want to check out that story, we're going to put a link in the description. Mm -hmm. So go and have a look. Think up some animals that you'd like to de-extinct. So there you go. Now, uh, let's quickly get on Adam's story. Yeah, so my story, it's not, 
quite as light-hearted as Phil's. Um, you may remember last week there was a transgender teacher called Lucy Meadows um, who actually killed herself. Um, and a lot of people have linked that to an article, to a column written by Richard Littlejohn in the Daily Mail. Now, um, people have been getting very, very angry on Twitter, but saying, accusing the Daily Mail and accusing Littlejohn of using hateful language in describing Lucy Meadows. Now, um, it's not for us to judge. I mean, you can make up your own minds. But now people are organising a vigil for the teacher outside the Daily Mail's offices, um, which is happening tonight at 6pm. So if you want to find out more about that, you might be able to head down there yourself if it's the kind of story that's got you angry. Um, it's certainly got a lot of people angry. The guy that tweeted out in the first place about this was a guy called Jason Reed UK on Twitter. It's been retweeted hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, so like I said, it's a pretty serious story. Um, the Daily Mail took down the article um, the day that the teacher killed herself. Um, and um, But until that point, it, it remained online. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of anger on Twitter and you never know, there might be a lot of people turning up to this vigil later on tonight. If you want to read the article as well, it, uh, the Daily Mail may well be under the false impression that you can in fact delete things from the internet. But if you want to find that article, it does still exist. A quick Google search, you can dig it out and read it for yourself. I'll make your own mind up. Let us know what you thought about it. Uh, I read the article, I guess you guys read it too. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually. I'm saying nothing. Can you check it out? So there you go. Now your story, Laura. So yeah. Oh, actually, go up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I do apologise. Right. Um, yeah, so it is Independence Day in Greece, but rather than being really happy about it, lots of Greeks are using the day um, to protest about other grievances that they have with the Greek government and military and things like that. Um, there's been a few marches and protests going on around Greece, and the citizen journalist I Rate Greek has been live tweeting about it all and tweeting photos as well. Um, so this photo um, shows someone protesting in a t-shirt which says, tear gas in school, 7th of March 2013. And that is referring um, to the fact that lots of people say um, the Greek state set off tear gas in schools in a town called Skouris where people have been protesting about a government gold mine there. I think it's a government gold mine, sorry, we should check that out. Um, and then this is another photo which shows riot police guarding the Greek parliament um, in anticipation of uh, violence. Um, then this other tweet says that there's clashes and tear gas that has been going on in the Independence Day parade. Um, people have tried to prevent a Golden Dawn MP from laying a wreath and Golden Dawn are a sort of Far right party. Yeah, I'm just trying to say that in a diplomatic way. Extreme. <laughs> yeah, party. Not a nice bunch in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, and then this last one, uh, this last tweet is uh, quoting a uh, grandma, um, also in the town of Skouris, where the person wearing the T-shirt um, was protesting, and this is in the town where the gold mine is. And the granny says, "When the mining company leaves, we the grandmas will go and plant back the trees they cut." So there you go. Mhm. Mm all those tweets, we'll put the link up to the Storyfy article that we've done if you want to check out any of those stories. And Grace, you have a story that you saw on Reddit this morning. Yes. This afternoon, whatever time you found it. Yesterday, um, somebody asked, what is the deepest you've been on the, on the web? <laughs> and for anybody who doesn't know, there's a deep web, which is like the underbelly of the whole internet, where a lot of stuff, you have to access it anonymously, which mm. means going through on a Tor browser, which isn't like Google Chrome or Firefox, it's sort of... You, you can hide, can't you? And you can go into the into the deep darkness of the web, which, um, I mean, there's illegal stuff going on there. There's, like, drug trade and things like that, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. <laughs> it is pretty crazy. I saw, I read that thread this morning, <laughs> and the strange thing about that thread was how many people, even on Reddit, which I've always thought was technologically mm. incredibly savvy, how few people even know that this thing exists. And yeah. yet, if you do go on there, um, I've had a little poke around in there and had a look. It's absolutely mind-boggling what goes on, on on that part of the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, w I seriously wouldn't go on there kind of light-heartedly like, oh, let's have a little look. It is kind of odd. And, uh, yeah. We, Sa Sam's, done a, Sam's done a video on this before. Um, he did a, an investigates piece on um, uh, the Silk Road yes. and the online drugs trade, mm -hmm. um, which is probably worth checking out if you want to find out more about it. Yeah. Should we try and get the thread up very quickly? Mm. We can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, it's not internet, internet no. is broken. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, the internet. 
Now it's time for your comments mm -hmm. because we said we were going to do it. We've, we've cut them down. We've selected them even more this time. So if you find yourself in this list, you should be very honored. Uh, <laughs> you really should. Uh, normally we have like 15. This is from the story we did about the Philadelphia shooting. Now I was off on holiday at this time. You were? I was. But um, Adam, why don't you read it out? Read out the comment and then explain. Right, so the comment says, five American guys and not one has a gun to defend themselves. Fail. I know what they would buy next if it's not a gun-free state where only criminals and trigger-happy cops are allowed to have guns. Lol. Lol. With a little happy, happy face afterwards. Um, so basically the story was that there was, this, there was this group of guys inside a Chinese takeaway and then a gunman came up, a lone gunman, and just basically tried to force his way into the, into the restaurant. Well, restaurant's a loose term for it. Um, and uh, he couldn't get in, but he just fired through the, through the door and ended up wounding three people. Um, yeah. All of whom survived. And if you were the, obviously this is one. This was the top voted comment on that piece. People saying that those people inside of the takeaway, if they had had weapons, may well have been able to defend themselves. It's the debate that goes on and on and on, and probably will never end. But if you want to watch a 45 minute debate about it, where we tried to come to a logical conclusion, we actually did a debate about gun crime and gun control and gun laws. We will put a link up to that in the description as well. Uh, the next one is. This was your piece, Adam, about, uh, it was two years... Yeah, two years into Syria. the war in Syria and how much have things changed, um, what's gone wrong, because it has turned into a horrible, horrible mess. Um, and this comment just is from Thomas Scully, and it says, anyone else wondering if Syria is just a pawn in a nasty game of chess? Um, which I saw is a fair point. There's, there, seems to be, there seems to be a lot of outside interests in Syria. And a lot of people in the comment section reflect those kind of fears. So join it. There's a good debate going on in there. If you want to kind of like uh, have a big debate with someone, join in that, that video. We'll put a link up to all of these videos in the description. This one was from the story about, um, ultimately, in a nutshell, a guy drove past two schools in Australia and he dumped a two lot, tons. two tons yeah. of asbestos outside the school. The guy's an idiot. And everybody was really, really mad at him. Uh, and a lot of lots of stuff getting upvoted, but one gem you guys overlooked and didn't upvote this one, but we spotted it. It said this: maybe this bloke should be locked in an airtight room with all the asbestos he dumped in with a series of Blendtec blenders without the lids and ask the question: Will it blend? <laughs> so it made me laugh quite a lot. So I thought I'd put it in joke. So hats off to you, David Fisher. You made me smile. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now who wants to talk about David Hasselhoff? Uh, <laughs> we always like to. <laughs> Go on, Laura, you do it. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't think it's going right, 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 okay. to. <laughs> right, so, so there's one final bit I'm of the glad. Berlin Wall, which which is a monument to to the fact that it was there in the first place. It's, it sort of commemorates the separation of East and West Berlin. Um, and there's now something called the Eastside Gallery, which lots of artists have come around the come from around the world, and they've created art on this bit of wall that is dedicated to freedom um, and what freedom means to them um, and it's being threatened with demolition to be replaced with luxury apartments um, so naturally David Hasselhoff he's big in Germany he came down to try and save <laughs> the wall um, and he sang a little song he did, oh yeah let's try and block the song out right <laughs> sang a little song got all his fans down but Avalona Kitty said this I think it would be silly and very short-sighted to knock the wall down as the Hoff said, this is a part of history and a very important, important part at that. It is a reminder to the world that what division and hate can erect and what understanding and the desire for freedom can take down. I think it would be a disservice to future generations to remove this piece of history, especially such a symbolic and powerful one at that for something as trivial as an apartment complex. So perhaps the Hoff has really inspired a piece of Berlin history not to be knocked down so. for a block of flats. <laughs> so we took a look at all of these comments. These were our favourite of the whole week, so if you are in this list, uh, you're brilliant. But David Fisher of Asbestos Tipping Fame, you win our comment of the week, just because no one upvoted you, and for that, you should feel truly ashamed, Truth Loaders, because this was a brilliant <laughs> gem of a comment that you guys missed, so we're giving it comment of the week, so mm -hmm. there you have it. Now we should probably talk about what's coming up this week. Yep. So who wants to start with that? Oh, I can. Okay, so tomorrow we are having a biohacking special day. Uh, Sam talks a lot about biohacking in his Investigates on Friday, and we are going to take it further. So we have um, a guest 
well, we're going to link to a guest vlog from Dave Asprey, um, who is, oh, he's also known as the Bulletproof Executive, and he basically biohacks his mind and body and thinks he's raised his IQ and all sorts of things. So we'll be having, he will be our guest vlogger of the week. And then in the afternoon at 4 p.m. GMT, we will be having a live uh, hangout discussion on biohacking, biohacking, colon, uh, can it improve our lives? I should note, on that topic, you've just reminded me that last night I actually had a dream that uh, I'd had neomidium magnets placed under all of my fingers, and then they ripped out when I went past a really strong magnet, oh. and it was horrifying. That is my fear. So, there that you go. That is my fear of magnets in my fingers. Yeah. As for me, this evening, I'm going to be with Adam going down to Westminster to cover a debate about how accurate are portrayals of young people in the media. It's going to be pretty interesting. So I'm looking and whether or not people have lost interest in politics yeah. as well, whether or not politics says anything to young people. Um, and we'll be putting up a video about that tomorrow. Yeah, so it's going to be good. Yeah, and then also later on in the week, um, we had a tweet earlier on, I think it was over the weekend, uh, from somebody called Score Enticer, um, and he suggested that we look into the story of the Rohingya people in Burma, um, which is actually something that Phil and I had been discussing last Thursday. Um, so we're doing a bit more research into that. There's basically allegations that there's that the government and military have been involved in murder and the local population have turned on the Muslim minority. Um, so there's yeah allegations of murder, rape and hundreds of thousands of people being displaced. Um, so we're going to be looking into that uh, for later on in the week. And is that it? Is that all the things we're working on? There's the debate on Thursday. Oh my yes, gosh! I forgot the about debate. our debate. <laughs> please, please do oh, describe yeah. the debate because I wasn't here on Friday. And I don't know enough about it. Well, it's whether or not it's it's off the back of this thing we're going to tonight. Um, whether or not young people care about politics, whether or not they whether or not they've become apathetic, and it's basically because you quite often hear that story about young people in the in the media that they just don't care. And we want to find out if they really do. We're not just going to say, yeah, no, that young people, nothing for them in politics. What we want to do is find out whether or not young people actually have a genuine interest in politics. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting debate. I would say that there's 25,000 people subscribed to Truthloader. A lot of them are young people. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I think that people are interested in politics, whether or not they're interested in Westminster style, two uh, opposing parties sitting opposite each other and shouting and jeering each other constantly. Mm -hmm. Possibly not. So that's going to be really interesting. That's this Thursday live at 7 p.m. And then on Friday, we have Truth Loaded Investigates with me and Sam. He will be back for that. It's going to be awesome. Is there anything else we need to tell the guys? Well, possibly our soapbox that we've got. Sorry. That's on Wednesday, and that will be featuring uh, Smari McCarthy, who created the Icelandic Pirate Party. And he is an information freedom activist, and he will be getting on his soapbox awesome. to rant. I learned what the Wednesday soapbox was in the show live, so <laughs> professional. But that sounds absolutely amazing, and I can't wait for that. So other than that, I think we're all done. We'll see you again tomorrow live at 4 p.m., and you will see this awesome video that me and Adam are going to put together as well. Mm -hmm. See you then. Take it easy.